Good afternoon and welcome to the Eurasia Mining PLC Investor Q&A session. Throughout this recorded meeting, investors will be in listen-only mode. Questions could be submitted anytime by the Q&A tab situated on the right-hand corner of your screen. Simply type in your question and press send. Due to the number of attendees today, the company may not be in a position to answer every question received during the meeting itself. However, the company can review all questions submitted today and publish responses where it's appropriate to do so. Before we begin, we'd like to submit the following poll. I'd now like to hand you over to Christian Shafalitsky, Executive Chairman. Thank you very much, Paul. Um, welcome, everybody, to this webinar. It's the first one we've done in quite a while. And uh, I will go into detail about that uh, as we go through the series of questions. We've had we've got an amazing number of people attending, 615, 620 at the last count. And um, we also were given at least 300, and, or 300 questions or more to answer, which means that uh, we're, we're, just, we're trying to kind of lump them up a bit a lot of them were the same ones and we'll try and put them together into one uh list of uh questions which i will deal with uh through the the webinar so i'll hand back to paul who uh will deal with the format fantastic christian thank you um as christian said we did receive a number of questions thank you to all those investors for submitting those and as previously mentioned uh, due to the number of attendees today the company may not be in a position to answer every question it's received so let's move on to those quest uh, questions christian um let's group those into themes as you said uh, the first theme we've got here is sale of assets when will this be concluded well this of course is our favorite question and i have all i can say uh, is that the process is ongoing and at times we have several parties uh, reviewing the data. Um, we have a big data room with a lot of material in it, and uh, there are a number of parties in it at any moment in time. Uh, and in, you may remember that last year we were advancing discussions uh, very uh, to, close to conclusion with one party, but unfortunately this did not proceed to formal term to a formal term sheet. Um, so that's it was disappointing, but we continue, and there are, as I said, quite a number of people still looking at our assets. Thank you. Um, following that theme, how much interest has been shown in the assets for sale? And do you think a deal can be done before an equity raise? As I said, um, the main issue is trying to predict when a, a term sheet, a formal term sheet can be completed. And I can't do that today. Um, but meanwhile, we have to do certain things such as continue to keep the ground in good standing in the two main areas of activity. And also, of course, meet the costs of the parent PLC and looking after our AIM listing. Um, as you know, we are planning a, a secondary listing in Astana uh, in Kazakhstan. And the idea of that is to increase the liquidity as it has been uh, much less uh, prominent here in, on AIM in recent times, mainly because, of course, of the jurisdiction that we've been working in. Thank you. Is the credible buyer from October 2021 the strategic investor linked with a Russian management buyout? Um, I'll be speaking a little bit later. We have a lot of questions about the MBO uh, option, but um, the, we made a reference to this credible buyer in September 21. It was a large strategic investor and we continue to maintain a dialogue with them. Thank you. What is your preferred route to concluding a sale of Eurasia Mining's assets in Russia? And are you able to share a high level list of milestone events required to achieve this? Uh, the, the process is actually quite simple. If, if a binding agreement is reached and announced, a general meeting would be called, will be called for all shareholders to review the offer and to vote to accept or reject the offer. And this would come together with a statement from the board uh, recommending acceptance, obviously, because that's why it's being put, that's why it's being announced. Thank you. Given the recent order signed by President Putin allowing VTB Bank and its subsidiaries to transact with companies controlled by persons from unfriendly countries, how does this affect Eurasia's ability to conduct business, especially regarding potential deals involving Russian assets? Well, uh, all I can say at this point is that we're looking at various legal alternatives as to how to structure a sale. And uh, we will re report on the options that we're proceeding with as they arise. Are Norlis Nickel an interested party for buying assets? Um, as people probably realise, I can't comment on who any counterparty is until a binding offer is made. So that's it, it sounds like a poor answer, but it's the only one I can give. Thank you. Other large Russian asset sales have been completed. What is presenting, uh, preventing a sale for Eurasia? Do the board of directors think they can avoid discounts, haircuts imposed by the Russian government and companies from non-friendly jurisdictions that are see seeking their Russian assets? Uh, the answer I'll give you is the same as the one 
that uh, I gave just a moment ago, and that is that uh, we are looking at all the options on how we could structure a sale. And again, we will report on that uh, as they arise. Have there been any offers which you've declined? There have there have been offers, um, and some of them actually, you know, going back to before the Ukraine crisis, were from largely from Western companies. But obviously, they didn't progress for various reasons, and uh, the geopolitical uh, uh, climate is the main reason why uh, it has been far more difficult to uh, find uh, uh, satisfactory counterparties. Okay, moving on perhaps to uh, operations, the theme around that. Are there any plans to commence a mining program ourselves if the buyer buyers pull out or aren't found in the near future? If mining ourselves is the only option, when do you envisage this decision being made and a start date for mining? Uh, our licenses in COLA are in good standing. and But there is one important thing, and that is to say that the NKT project, which is being brought uh, to the mining license stage, uh, should... For, for obvious reasons, being right next door to the Manchatundra open pit uh, areas, they should be developed together. And so this would be the most efficient and profitable scenario uh, is to have the joint development uh, advanced, have the two projects developed together. Thank you. Why did the board of directors decide to take a trade loan when they've clearly stated there is no issue in selling the concentrate stockpile and getting the funds back to the UK PLC? Will the concentrate be sold in order to repay the trade loan and prevent conversion and therefore shareholder dilution of the trade loan uh, to shares within 90 days? If not, why not? When uh, the stockpile is there, able to be sold and the directors have a fiduciary duty to shareholders? Um, that's a, quite a, an obvious question, which we have to answer ourselves all the time. But basically, one of the reasons why we've opted to do this is that getting the funds to the UK does require statutory approvals and indeed potential haircuts to use the phrase that we heard earlier um, and as a large shareholder myself i really dislike uh, poor use of funds and uh, for this reason we're looking for ways to minimize that uh, the asset sale still remains our priority of course can you explain how the company's recent financial flexibility e.g not drawing down the second tranche the tfa is related to any settlement or agreements does this reflect a stronger financial position alternative funding source uh, sources that have yet to materialize well I mean, I mean that's obviously just normal management of funds that's a simple explanation and as i said already as a large shareholder myself i'm always looking for ways to minimize costs and potential dilution but at the same time maintaining flexibility is just as important thank you can you outline the company's working capital needs over the next 12 months and how the board plans to meet those needs aside from the tfa well, um, as is implicit in what I said earlier about uh, the uh, concentrate stockpile, uh, working capital for the assets themselves can be provided by sales from there. Um, and as for our PLC, we've worked very hard on cutting our costs to the core, as uh, you're probably aware from our announcement on the TFA. Are there any NDAs still active? If so, why? NDAs are non-disclosure agreements, which we put in place with each party that comes to look uh, at our projects. And indeed, there are many that are still active um, until we are in a position to announce a binding agreement. Uh, we can only provide general generalized uh, updates, not specific to any particular uh, counterparty. Thank you. Do you have any links with SR? If so, what are they? Uh, that's a bit of, I don't know why that question was asked, but I'm happy to answer it. Basically to say that Artyom, our, our director, is uh, he works with SR, and that is the only connection. Great, thank you. Ordinary resolution four is for the reappointment of Tamerlan Abdekiev. Tamerlan was uh, appointed during 2023 and is the highest paid director. Can you provide some update to justify his reappointment? What is the rationale behind the change from non-executive to executive director? Well, uh, when our CEO departed in 2023, uh, my workload increased significantly, and uh, Tamerlan happily was ready, was prepared and ready to provide assistance over this uh, last 12-month period where um, I was working on my own at executive level. Um, as an addition, it's worth mentioning that uh, until recently, our banking was exclusively done through a Japanese institution, and he's a resident there, so he managed the relationship. And then I shouldn't underestimate his his uh, contribution 
in the uh, sale process where he was very active in with respect to certain Asian and Russian counterparties. Thank you. The latest fig figures given for the WK concentrate are confusing. June 23, we had 3.5 million sterling. December 23, we sold 2 million. We now have 5 million. Well, uh, in maintaining our ground at West Kitlam in good standing, as we are required to do, uh, some additional concentrate has been added to the stockpile uh, since the, um, uh, the original figure was announced. Um, which Russian subsidiaries secure the $1.3 million loan? And what are the terms, i.e. who's repaying it and what's it secured on? Uh, the, 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 this loan is a normal uh, a working capital loan for the operating mining company, Kosminsky Kamen, at West Kitlam. And it's based on managing the cash flow and the seasonal nature of production, which, as you know, is a summer mine. Uh, it, 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 it works between largely May and now, roughly now, end of October. And then the rest of the time, um, it's um, on uh, just maintaining, uh, doing some uh, stripping work and keeping the ground in good standing. Have you found anyone at all who wants to mine Mochatundra? Of course, because it's our main asset. And together with the NKT uh, project, uh, it is the main interest for all buyers who are in, in contact with us uh, um, with a view to purchasing the assets. Thanks. Now moving on, a uh, number of questions around dual listing. When are you expecting to complete the list on the AIX? Uh, the plan is to do so. It's, it's, it's a short-term goal, and uh, we want to do it as quickly as possible. But uh, bear in mind that there are counterparties that have to be looked after locally um, to make sure it can be done efficiently. Thank you. Is the strategic investor that Eurasia has been engaging with planning to buy shares on the AIX or via open market purchases? Uh, I don't feel I can comment on that just at the moment uh, until uh, our, the transaction is completed. Thank you. Will the a uh, LSE AIM listing be maintained even with the Kazakhstan listing? The short answer is yes. Fantastic. Thank you. Uh, okay, let's move on to valuation strategy. First question we've got here, will we ever see the price of 42p, which was re reached only a few years ago? Well, as we're all aware, the geopolitical crisis was a key driver behind the fall in our share price. Um, it was entirely outside our, our control, and uh, the reaction of the markets and the share price were directly uh, related to that event. And in, meanwhile, we're doing our best to manage the business in a, in a very, it's still a very difficult environment. Um, I can't predict what the share price will do, um, but let's just say that myself and the board are confident that the assets are worth more than the current share price. And just following on from that, what sort of share price are you are you now deeming as fair value should a buyout occur? Well, um, typically what we would do uh, if we get an offer and it's a binding offer, we would put it to the uh, to the shareholders, probably with a fairness opinion uh, made by an investment bank or similar and uh, which the board would uh, recommend for acceptance and then would be presented to you, uh, your shareholders for uh, with our recommendation. In the recent RNS, you said for our strategy to be successful, what is the strategy? The strategy is, as we keep saying, is basically to complete a sale of our assets as efficiently as possible, but uh, with the proviso that it must at least uh, ensure that the value is at the very minimum retained or basically improved. Um, will you comment on the company's communication over the past few years? Yeah, that's probably the, the sore point for, I know from correspondence I get from shareholders who are in touch with me personally. And that is, from a personal point of view, I found it really frustrating that we have not been able to debate issues with our shareholders to ensure that we, we can find the best way to manage our statutory obligations in various jurisdictions, uh, not just in the UK, and to monitor and ensure compliance with the sanctions regulations as they have developed, which they're, they're also moving all the time. And this is a really complex job. And uh, I hope that today's webinar will demonstrate that we want to engage with shareholders. But, uh, you know, we started out after the crisis began with uh, quite strong legal advice to, uh, I, I put it colloquially, keep the heads down. And um, we, uh, we look forward to trying to do more of this in the future now that we have a better understanding of both the sanctions regime and the, the various uh, statutory compliance requirements that we have to live with. 
Um, okay, several board members, including yourself, have pledged shares and deferred compensation. Could you elaborate on the board's confidence in the company's future and any specific catalysts that give you optimism for a successful outcome in the near term? Well, I think you get the impression that the answer is in the question itself. We would not be um, betting our own assets and compensation if we did not believe in the company's future and the value of our assets. What are key milestones or announcements that shareholders should expect over the next three to six months? In the short term, um, we are doing what we can from our from our own domestic point of view, if you like, and that the main thing is there to improve our the listing uh, and there, thereby the liquidity of our share, and of course the sale of the assets, which we hope we will be able to announce uh, not in a long future, but soon. And uh, the timing is difficult to predict, of course, in, uh, precisely because the geopolitical environment is still difficult. But uh, we're not betting on that. We're doing our best right now to, to try and get the job done. Just following on a, a little from the earlier question, how confident are you in the strategy, given the amount of money both you and other members of the board have invested in the company? Uh, I think that I'll deal with that at the end, um, because it's a it's a it's a it's a question which really wraps up quite nicely when we get to the end of our of the questionnaire. Sure. Is your belief that the actions you intend to take, as indicated in the recent RNS, will enable uh, better enable a strategic exit from Russia, and in doing so, increase the potential special dividend for shareholders in the next six months? I think that you can hear from what we've been from our commitment yet yeah, that we do. Uh, we, we, it is our belief that we that we will um uh do exactly as we said okay moving on to mbo uh, as we touched on a, a little bit earlier on is the mbo the management's preferred option are we still in negotiations for a sale or has this fallen through an mbo is just one option let's think about this Sim uh, you know a sale outright is the simplest solution but of course a partial sale is also an option just like an mbo is we're considering whatever options are the most practical at this time, and uh, we will, of course, keep you informed uh, when one of the when the solution that we recommend proceeding with is announced. I'm going to touch just a bit further on that. Um, what would be the benefit of an MBO? Uh, what would be the time scale as well? Uh, it's it's way too early to comment. I mean, as 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 I've just said, an MBO is one of the options, and it is by no means uh, a given that that would would be instead of a, an outright sale. And just following on for that, rumours of management buyout are circling to take uh, take out a very low price, which shuts out nearly all shareholders outside management. How true is this? And is maximising shareholder value for all shareholders still your priority? Well, as a significant shareholder myself, I'm in the same boat as you, and uh, I do not want to shut myself out either. Just to remind you, I've been working in Eurasia for 22 years, and in that time, uh, we've gone from uh, working on what were really early stage exploration projects to now having an active mine and, and uh, two projects in COLA, which are capable of being, as they used to say in the old days, company makers, i.e. very valuable projects. Um, I don't think that we as a team, uh, meaning the board and uh, my other fellow large shareholder, Dmitry Sushov, that we would be betting our assets and compensation if we didn't think that this would help uh in uh in the development of the company's future success um if there is an mbo how long does it take before we can access our funds provided the subsequent voting uh for such passes um it's difficult to predict that we're back to the timing question and i really can't tell you precisely how long that's going to take but um uh basically uh it's 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 uh we're we're not waiting for events we're just getting on with doing the job now thank you and will an mbo bypass the mandatory russian exit taxes which are appeared to have been increased 17th of october from 50 percent to 60 percent independent valuation and 15 to 35 percent exit tax well as i said before we're looking at various legal options and alternatives as to how best to, to structure a sale or mbo or partial sale or joint venture whichever and uh we will uh we will do we will do that in the context of getting the best possible price we can in the current environment thank you um we've got a couple of questions uh thank you chris for glenn on sino steel do you intend to activate sino the sino steel contract if an asset sale cannot be realized i think it's worth 
uh, pointing out that the sign of steel contract remains in place and can be activated by us or an op any operator, a third party one, for example, who you know acquires the project can uh, can piggyback in on the uh, agreement we made with sign of steel. The advantage of the sign of steel contract is that it, it, it includes uh, financial uh, facility as well as the uh, EPC contract itself. Thank you. Um, next subject we've got here is Eurasia Mining version 2.0. Is 2.0 still a thing that's going to happen or has the plan now changed to finalise 1.0 and leave it there? Um, well, obviously it, it's kind of a little bit on the back burner because selling our assets is the key, uh, the key strategy. And uh, we, we expect that at least we all, we said it, as we said back in uh, December 21, that our, our goal is that the proceeds of such a sale would be uh, at least 80% would be, would, would make up a, a special dividend for shareholders. We haven't changed our view on that. And uh, at that point, then we would uh, discuss with shareholders going for version two. The priority remains the sale. Thank you. And just a few um, other questions that we've got come through here. There's been some concern regarding claimants potentially disrupting the passage of resolutions at the AGM. Have there been any developments in terms of settlement or resolving disputes with claimants? And how is the company addressing the influence on shareholder voting? Well, as far as Eurasia is concerned, we're no longer party to uh, any dispute regarding the ownership of certain shareholdings. Um, and uh, in that regard, we're therefore not in a position to influence uh, what happens as it is sub -judicial. Thank you. Um, what strategies are the board of directors considering moving forward outside the sale of assets to positively affect the share price of the organization? Well, let me just summarize where we are um, at this point, because I think uh, people maybe lose sight of the fact that we're trying to look after the company in a difficult environment. We're trying to keep all our options open. We want to be able to do our best for uh, the company in what has been really adverse conditions for the last two years. It has been difficult to manage the uh, even the day to day activities on the mine and uh, and also the development of the Montetundra and NKT projects uh, when we have to take into account a lot of different uh, moving uh, constraints on on our work. You know, people are uh, a simple a simple example will do uh, a, a laboratory that would have been we would have been using routinely for years. It may have suddenly appeared on a on a sanctions list and we no, can no longer use them. This kind of thing is happening all the time. And so we have to be uh, able to be flexible and able to respond to the environment that we find ourselves in. Uh, remember, I, I, I'm sorry if I repeat the point, but I think it's important. We spent 20, I've spent 22 years on this and in my and the team, uh, the core team of, of the people working in Russia and in working in the company. I've been working on this now for oh, over a decade, just uh, developing and advancing the projects. So I, I really, all I can say is that we, we absolutely are committed to getting a result uh, in view of the fact that, that the constraints are third parties, not ourselves. Thank you. And um, why should shareholders vote in favor of the AGM resolutions? Uh, that question should be, obvious, I hope, from what I've been trying to say, that that is, we we need support from the shareholders to support the uh, actions of the board, which is, as I said, to minimize our costs to, in my case, putting up a guarantee uh, to support uh, third party financing as appropriate. Needless to say, I would like to limit that. But at the end of the day, if we have to do what we have to do, and uh, that is why we need to have the flexibility which we're seeking at the AGM resolutions. We would like your support and I hope that we can rely on it because uh, I'm very impressed by the fact that 600 of you had registered to attend the webinar. Um, I hope that means that uh, some of you are keen to see that we are trying to do our best uh, in difficult circumstances and uh, I can guarantee that we are committed uh, to getting the job done. Fantastic. Thank you, Christian. Thank you for asking all those questions from investors. Um, and of course, the company can review all questions submitted and published responses where appropriate to do so on the Investor Meet Company platform. Uh, I think we have covered off all those themes that we've got through through today. Before redirecting investors to provide you with their feedback, which I know is particularly important to you and the company, Christian, can I just ask you for a few closing comments, please? Um, 
well, I feel I've I've already said uh, what I wanted to say about that, but I would just I, I would want to thank again those people who have given the time to come and listen to our story and answer the questions that were put to us uh, over the previous uh, week or so, and that um, uh, we are hopeful that you that you would uh, support us in the coming weeks uh, up to the AGM and at the AGM itself, of course. Fantastic. Thank you. Christian, look, thanks for updating investors today. Can I please ask investors not to close the session? You should now be automatically redirected to provide your feedback in order Christian and the team can better understand your views and expectations. This will only take a few moments to complete. And I'm sure will be greatly valued by the company. On behalf of the management team of Eurasia Mining PLC, we'd like to thank you for attending today's presentation. This concludes today's session and good afternoon to you all.